If you watch a number of reviews on the Sony a6300, a couple of themes will become apparent. A number of people report overheating issues, uh, and everyone seems to agree that the battery life is terrible. And because of that, there's another thousand videos on how to adapt other kinds of batteries to your Sony a6300. Now, there are only two ways to power the camera. You can either power it through the battery port, or you can power it through USB. If you choose to power it through the battery port, well, then you need one thing specifically, which is a dummy battery. This battery, uh, you plug in your power source, and away you go. Typically speaking, these dummy batteries are sold with a AC power unit, as you see here. However, there are ways to adapt uh, older Sony N NPF 970 batteries or Canon uh, LPE6 batteries uh, if you are already heavily invested in those. If you don't need to put your power on the camera, you have tons of options. If you have a tripod, you can mount your USB or battery-based uh, uh, power options and you really have no problem. But when you're trying to mount power to the camera itself, the problems are all about weight and distribution. Now, I've certainly seen a lot of videos of people trying to adapt the NPF 970 battery to the camera. And, uh, you know, this is a ginormous, heavy battery. Uh, it is worth about six or six and a half of the normal batteries. Um, but putting it on your camera, I mean, uh, uh, if you watch Max Yuryev's channel, um, he mounts it on top of the camera like so. Another guy mounts it on an L bracket next to the camera. But no matter what you do, it's just not very convenient. So after pondering this for a little while, I think I came up with a pretty good solution. But first, the question is, you know, how much power does this camera really consume? And to figure that out, we have a USB multimeter that we can plug in and do some quick testing with. As you can see, this battery pack is supplying 5.22 volts at 0.32 amps. And what it's doing now, because the camera is off, is it's actually charging the internal battery. And the internal battery is very close to 100% at the moment anyway, so it's just giving it a trickle to top it off. Now I'm trying to get the maximum draw here, so I, I've chosen what I think will be the worst case scenario, which is the Canon 70 to 300 millimeter lens. It has uh, image stabilization. It's going through a Sigma MC11 mount converter. And then of course, everything is turned on on the camera that I think will draw some power, uh, Wi-Fi, etc. It's all on. So let's turn on the camera and see what we get. Okay, so it shot up to 0.8 amps very briefly. Uh, we are in aperture priority mode um, and it seems to be holding down around 0.45 to 5.5 5 amps. Um, let's uh, try to do some focusing. And it is in continuous autofocus mode. The image stabilizer is on and you can see we're popping up to about 7.5 or 0.75 and when we take pictures we pop up to 0.85 at the highest. All right. So that's about what you can expect. Oh, 0.87. Okay. So even when it's writing to the card, it's still not uh, exceeding 0.87 amps. All right, so let's switch over to video mode since a lot of people uh, say that they overheat in video mode. Uh, we are set to uh, 4K, uh, Super 35 mode, 24P. Um, of course, the image stabilizer automatically comes on and stays on, so we are running at about uh, 0 0.79, 0 0.8 amps, somewhere in there. Uh, I should also mention that I have um, dual record turned on trying to again increase the heat okay so we're popped up to 0.87 uh, let me do some auto focusing seems to hold around 0.85 i wonder if there isn't a limiter in there where it's starting to draw from the internal battery anytime it wants more than four watts of power all right so 0.87 seems to be about the limit. 
but let's try a Sony lens for comparison. Yep, that seems to be about the limit. All right, so if the camera won't draw over 0.87 amps, then we have a lot of options because most uh, battery packs will supply at least one amp. This is a one amp. Uh, even this little guy that I got from Educause this year is a one amp uh, uh, battery pack, uh, 1.5 amps, and um, this, I believe, will do 2.4 amps. There's a couple things to note about powering the camera. First of all, if you go through the dummy battery, um, note that the original batteries are listed as 7.2 volt. Now, when it's fully charged, uh, actually the battery will read about 8.4 volts. So people have had luck with uh, 9 volt battery packs. I don't know that I would go that far, but uh, that is pretty close, reasonably close to um, 8.4 volts when this battery is fully charged. Uh, so it may be within the camera's um, uh, range. I would personally stick to uh, providing somewhere between 7.2 and 8.4 volts. And uh, that's what's kind of nifty about this particular device. This is a, um, well, it's called a battery, battery charger because it charges 18 uh, 650 batteries. Uh, these are 18650 batteries. They are 3.7 volt, 3400 milliamp, um, and uh, uh, there are five of them. Basically, if you put batteries in here, hook it up to a USB charger, it will uh, charge and balance all of the batteries. However, it will do a couple of other interesting things. Uh, first, it'll do USB at 1 amp or 2.4 amps, but it will also provide any voltage you want between 5 volts and 13 volts. So, for example, I am going to change this to 13 volts. And it's a slow process. This is a, a silly interface. There's only one button on the device, um, and that's kind of crazy, but uh, basically you can dial it up or down um, and so right now I've got it at 7.5 volts, uh, which is perfect for this device. It has a um, output. You can plug this in and then take this, plug it into your dummy battery, flip the camera over, take out the internal battery, put in the dummy battery, uh, and you'll see that there's a little door here that the cord can pop through, and voila. Now you are using this power supply for the camera. And it works just fine. The problem with this, as well as all of the options for converting your existing batteries um, to the A6300 is that A, they all rely on the dummy battery, uh, which is about 20 or so bucks. Uh, these will require a plate that you need to buy and then plug into the dummy battery. Um, you know, this requires a whole bunch of 18650 batteries, but they are all very large and heavy. Um, and so, you know, this is great if you want to stick it in your backpack and have a wire coming out to your camera. Uh, but if you want something that is self-contained on the camera itself, this doesn't work very well. But I've come up with a solution for that. Now, if you'd like on-camera power that lasts for a long time, but is lightweight and looks a little bit more professional, I would suggest this approach. First, you need a hot shoe to quarter inch uh, screw adapter. Uh, they usually ship with two of these nuts, but you will only need one. Okay, you also need a quarter inch rubber washer. Uh, and this is a cushion clamp, uh, otherwise called a wire loom clamp. Um, 
This one I got at uh, Lowe's. It's a one inch variety and I need a quarter inch 20 nut. And this is the center of it all. The Aki 5,000 milliamp uh, battery pack. Uh, this is about 10 bucks on Amazon. And uh, with 5,000 milliamps, it's uh, 25 watt hours, uh, which is basically you know, about three and a half of the Sony original batteries. So because this is supplying USB power, about three and a half batteries worth of power plus the battery in the camera, you would get about four and a half batteries worth of power out of this solution. And of course you'll need any uh, USB cable that you have. Um, so this is real simple. Now first we're gonna slide the hot shoe mount adapter into the hot shoe. We're gonna take the rubber washer, slide that down on top of it. And then we're gonna take the clamp, we're just going to put the screw through the first eyelet and then we're going to put the nut between the two eyelets and then screw down. So now this is going to trap the bottom flange or whatever you want to call it between the rubber washer and the nut. Okay, so now we've got that Then we take our other screw and Put that down there, but before we get it too tight, we want to put the power pack through the hole. Now I'm going to, only going to take it that far because I want to have good access to my uh, shutter button. And that should about do it. Okay, so now this nut does not have to go all the way down, it just needs to tighten it enough. And that should do it. All right. Now, um, one more thing. Uh, this nut kind of gets hard to turn. So actually, if you have a quarter inch 20 uh, connector, uh, this is for connecting two bits of quarter inch 20 rod. Um, I would use that. Makes it much easier to turn. And again, you don't need to turn this all the way down. You just have to make it so that this gets tight. Okay. Um, one of the nice things about the uh, rubber washer at the bottom is that even if you manage to turn this a bit, it's, uh, it's not going to break loose, basically. Uh, a lot of times people use these adapters and they'll have to crank them down, um, but if you give them a, a little bit of a turn, they just break loose and then start spinning. The rubber washer really prevents that in this case. All right, so then we take a micro USB adapter and plug it in. And that's it. This solution is small, it's unobtrusive, gives you about four and a half batteries worth of power, uh, doesn't block your eyepiece, and it's dirt cheap. This whole setup costs less than 20 bucks. As a point of fact, there is one thing to mention about powering via USB, and it may be true of the battery or the dummy battery. I'm not really sure because I don't have a, I don't have proper testing equipment for that. But, um, you know, this, USB power supply, it does not have an, an on off button. It's just always on, right? And uh, the camera is always drawing 40 milliamps. So the battery is done charging. It's at 100%. Uh, the light that tells you whether or not the battery is charging is off. But no matter how long you let this sit, the camera will always draw 40 milliamps. And I was trying to figure out what that was. Um, I've turned off the Wi-Fi, I have turned off. Someone else mentioned that the uh, viewfinder um, monitor uh, uh, infrared LED may constantly be on and that appears not to be the case. I've turned that function off. Um, so I do not know why the camera constantly draws 40 milliamps, but it just seems to be true. And based on other people's reports, they've said that the battery drains, even when they're not using the camera, it's been sitting in their bag for a while and the battery's half gone. This would seem to uh, corroborate that uh, the camera's just always drawing power. So if you have a solution like this, or if you're still just, or if you're just using battery power, um, you know, for travel, you may wanna kick your battery out and disconnect your charger um, just to prevent it from simply draining your batteries for sitting there. If you happen to know why the camera's pulling 40 milliamps, uh, please let me know in the comments below. This could very well be a bug or something I'm just not understanding, 
oh, maybe Sony can fix this in a later firmware. So before I close this, I'll also mention that there's a guy in Australia that is making a dummy battery that has a voltage regulator built into it. And I'm not sure if that's a great idea because the voltage regulator uh, is going to be producing some heat and I'm not so sure that you'd want that shoved in your camera. But um, what is cool about that is that you can supply a wide range of voltage supplies. So you could use even a power supply like this, which has 12, uh, 16, and 19 uh, volt out. Um, granted, you could use the USB, but if you wanted to go through the dummy battery, you could use 12, 16, or 19 volts, and you can even jumpstart your car. So there you go. So many ways to power your A6300. Uh, certainly, I like this one. I'm going to be using it all day at uh, the Indy 500, which is this weekend. I'll post some pictures online and let you know how it went. If you found this video helpful or even mildly interesting, please leave a comment below. Please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.